Okay, for this week's Hammer Time column, we decided to go with something different and try video blogging. So, with us today is uh, Genesio Hammer Time Pachioco. Did I pronounce your last name right? Uh, Pachaco. Pachaco. And with him is Hammer Time's niece, Angela, who um, right now is trying to feed Genesio from her tea oh, place it. So anyways, uh, Genesio, um, let me ask you a hard question. Okay. Now where do you stand on the minimum wage issue? It should be at 11 or 9 an hour. Okay. Now the NDP have um, said they're going to raise it to what? To ten dollars an hour, okay. which was their uh, pledge from the 2003 election, but they're getting there actually a year earlier because Sherry Devono of the NDP brought in a mm -hmm. private members bill in the legislature the other day uh, for uh, it was introduced as a uh, okay. private members bill kind of thing, and and the ball's rolling, and now we'll see. It'll be interesting what Mr. Orzetti does. Okay. Yeah, he, ha he has a chance now. But quick question for you: Why did they wait? For the Green Party to take up this issue. No, they didn't wait because it was part of their 2003 plan, which. The but we haven't heard anything about it over the last. Um, we haven't heard anything about it since that election. In the Green Party comes up with this, and then suddenly, two weeks later, the NDP introduces a private members bill. No, the, the, like I said, the, the mm -hmm. record states that it's been clear since 2003. It's been on record. It's, uh, it was through that election, if you go back to the archives and newspaper articles, it was NDP that wanted $10 an hour by 2007. But we haven't heard anything and, and, over the last three years. David, uh, Peterson, or uh, Dalton Mc, uh, McHarris, uh, wanted $8. Yeah. So, so what the NDP is doing right now is uh, bringing forth their, uh, their agenda for the next election. Yeah, which, which is progressive. But why did they wait for the end? I mean, why did they wait for the Green Party to take up this issue before they came out with um, private members bill? Uh, see, the thing is, with the the Green Party, uh, they they've been quite on the issue until this moment too, because in two thousand three, uh, the Green Party never mentioned nothing about the minimum wage. But then, how do you know that? Because I I was in that election and I didn't hear the Green Party support. Yeah, no, but the Green Party was locked out of the debates and well, that election. Oh, no, I understand that, but so they, could, they could have still talked about it and mentioned it through other media. Yeah, forms. but have you read their... So, but, but, but it's not relevant okay. in the sense of what, what, what has to be done now. Because, okay. because what I suggested, I called Howard Hampton's office yesterday. Yeah. And I suggested that they add an extra bill or yeah. on that same bill that anyone that is working, uh, that is not unionized, that do not have benefits. Sure. So people that are coming off the welfare rolls, the government okay. should allow them to carry their benefits, like their dental yeah. and drug plan. No, I'd say the Green Party and the NDP are in agreement on that. So really, it's not a controversial issue. But one thing where the Greens and the NDP are different is that while the Greens have not formed government, we have two NDP governments next door to Ontario. One in Saskatchewan and one in Manitoba. Um, why has there been no raising of the minimum wage there? See, but you got to put things in the full context because there's other things that that NDP government is doing that is helping people that are making less money than uh, the average person. Such as, as like their education system, uh, training, uh, their uh, what you call it, uh, apprenticeship. Yeah, but I mean, how that, well... That, that, that all yeah. adds up to helping... Sure, but how are well are kids from poor families going to learn if they don't receive proper no, nutrition? No, I understand that. Like, like, here in the Green Party, um, you know, we're dedicated towards, you know, helping children get good vegetables, and we're dedicated towards helping local producers. Yeah. Um, because well, NDP is doing the same thing, because Tony, the other day, mm -hmm. he was basically uh, talking with the farmers out... Uh, out in, uh, in yeah. the rural area. But what I'm saying so it's is... it's been an NDP policy yeah. since Tommy Douglas in the yeah. old days. Yeah. Uh, in but kids who aren't well-fed, kids who don't have 
good nutrition, kids who don't have a roof over their head are not going to learn as well as kids that do. I mean, now might we always have exceptions. This, this so why doesn't the NDP in Saskatchewan, in Manitoba, raise the minimum wage and set the example for other provinces in Canada, such as Ontario? Yeah, I, I agree that there, there's a, a more to this than meets the eye because you got to also talk, you got to put it in full context of all, uh, the other stuff in their budget. Uh, oh, that's yours. Oh, that's nice. That's okay. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. and the thing the thing is, uh, their the provincial budgets are progressive. Uh, they're helping small businesses. They're helping uh, people get more education. Cutting back on their tuition fees, uh, which helps yeah. people and lower wages. Yes, I grant you that the minimum wage should be increased also there because... Uh, what should it be increased to? It, sh it should be increased to a livable wage. Okay. And, and if that means that governments have to sus uh, su uh, supplement businesses, because not all businesses make a record profit. Okay. So, so you help them through the tax system kind of thing. Oh, it's yeah. stick six feet. You yeah. the drugs? Well, <laughs> okay. Go, so why, but why bring in a private member's bill in Ontario and not bring in a government bill? Because here in That's a very good question. That's what I've been asking David Orzetti since uh, Memorial, since 2003. And he used to be, he used to be in a union. So yeah. you think he would come from but, labor background? He, sure. And I, I spoke to David Orzetti, I think, a month yeah. after he got elected. And I yeah. said to him, I said, you could be a, 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 a SEAL, and yeah. whatever Dalton says, you jump. Or you could be uh, someone that uh, yeah. is independent and stands up for people's rights. Yeah. So he made his bed by choosing... Yeah. Uh, but David Orizetti you know, is a liberal well, it doesn't matter about MPP. The, I mean, here it goes. We have NDP um, representatives in Saskatchewan, in Manitoba. Um, I'm not sure about federally. I think. But it doesn't change the fact of what's happening in Ontario. Yeah. Oh, no, no. And because I'll, I'll give you a prime example. Uh, let's talk about a health tax yeah. premium. Okay, yeah. let me finish, please. Okay. Uh, health tax premium. And now, now we're going to pay uh, more for health, yeah. for tax system. They cut back on eye doctors, uh, yeah. chiropractors. That's an extra cost to these people that are... Well, I mean, wage. So part of it was Bob Ray who cut expensive. down on doctors. No, no, but what I'm saying is those things are not happening in those provinces because sure. the government's covering it. So that's less cost for... But hold on a second, hold on. You said those things are not happening in NDP provinces. Is it or is it not true that the... NDP in Saskatchewan busted the nurses' union back in the year 2000 I, I, when they were striking for a livable I, I, wage. I can't comment because I don't know the whole, uh, the whole, the whole, the whole story. So, but so this was an NDP province. No, These were nurses. In nurses, there's a lot of single mothers. There's a lot of. No, uh, I understand what you're saying, but I don't know all the facts. So, for me to give you an informed okay. answer, it, it won't be fair. Because but you do know that as a government. Um, you know, here it is, the NDP in Ontario have to bring in a private member's bill, but they formed the government in Saskatchewan in Manitoba. They don't have to bring in a mi private member's bill there. They could bring in a well, government that's bill. That's fine. But you also got to put in context, Pete, there's all other stuff they have done that is not being talked about. Like I said, they got, they got better education system where they're cutting back on tuitions. Uh, uh, they have um, more, uh, what you call it, uh, training for apprenticeship which this government's lacking behind. So they're doing the, the other stuff that also help the, the, the working poor uh, with less cost, less user fees, because they're using the tax system as a whole kind of thing. What, uh, what David, uh, uh, Dr. McCarris is about, is uh, continuing the Mike Harris uh, privatization, slashing, Why? divide and conquer, the P3s, yeah. it's like, uh, like a privatization through the back door. So there's yeah. accumulated effect with these sure. right-wing government. But what, what are they doing for minimum wage workers? And I think that's the question. Uh, in Ontario? Not no, 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 no. I mean in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. See, they don't have to bring a private member's bill there. No, that's fine. But what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is, they've done other things that help these people. Yes, mm -hmm. personally, I want the minimum wage to be across Canada, okay. where the federal government comes in, because you've got to remember, most of the cuts happen in... Seconds. Most of the cuts happened when uh, uh, Brian Maroon was in power, okay. Bob Ray was in power, we had the worst recession, and he cut transfer payments like to no end. Okay. Then, when, then Paul Martin gets in, and he said he was a defender of Medicare, 
kept twenty five billion dollars. Okay. So what you what you sow you shall reap. And now we're paying for the sins of all these right wing governments. 